Hello students, this is Deer Mouse Fur Color from the Field to the Beach Touch Device version. This is lesson 5.2. We're wrapping up Mouse Fur Color. Um, we just have one more lesson to do. That's a one question summary. We got this. So introduction. In lesson 5.1, we investigated factors that influence the survival of mice with different phenotypes. Phenotype, remember, is physical characteristics. It's what you can see and that these factors can charge the frequency of genotypes, that's what alleles you have, or set of alleles you have, in a population over time. Question one, write a brief summary of the findings from the experiment in lesson 5.1. Well, in lesson 5.1, we, um, we looked at how long it took a population on the beach to go from the mixed population that was there at the beginning of the simulation to an all light population. We did it with mutations on and mutations off. And we found that it took 19, 90 months without mutations turned on and 70 months with uh, mutations off on our first trial. It was your responsibility to do two more trials and figure out the um, average of the three trials for each mutations and no mutations, and you can explain what your results here are in the rest of uh, this answer space. Given your findings and those of other groups, how does turning off mutations and inheritance influence mouse color over time? Well, let's, let's remember what turning off inheritance did. We were very surprised things weren't turning out the way we thought and it's because we didn't have inheritance turned on. So just to remind you how important inheritance is or the ability to get alleles from your parents and not just randomly, we're all pretty much stuck with the alleles we get from our parents, whether we're a tree or a blade of grass or a mouse or a person. Um, we're going to run this simulation with things are as they are in the real world where there is inheritance and you can watch um, as the hawks eat the dark mice, eat more of the dark mice, they remove some of those dark alleles from the population and the population tends to uh, become lighter over time. You can see this pie graph here. Now the population is around half light mice and if we wait long enough, it'll probably go to almost all light mice. We've lost all of our dark mice now. We just have some medium mice. You can kind of see the trend here. Now, if we run it this, if we turn off inheritance and we make it not like reality, where mice at birth are just assigned a random allele, the computer just picks one. Instead of getting it from their parents, they just get a random one. We can run that again, we can change our conditions, and we can see that when we turn off inheritance, you can't get gene alleles from your parents. Um, this changes back to what it was in the beginning and pretty much stays there. So inheritance is a big part of natural selection. If you eliminate the animals that aren't as fit or don't do as well in that particular environment, you eliminate their alleles and they're not passed on to their kids. So we were just in lesson 5.1 looking at the impact of inheritance. Let's, now we know that inheritance is really important in any model of natural selection because the alleles that are selected against are le become less frequent in the population. So if you're a dark mouse on the beach and you're eaten, you can't pass on your alleles. So over time, those dark alleles um, fade from the population or become less frequent. So inheritance is important in the frequency of alleles 
over time. As mice are selected against, so they die, they cannot pass on their alleles, that version of the gene, to their offspring. And over time, the allele frequency changes. If all the dark mice keep getting eaten, there's less, there are fewer dark mice uh, available um, to create offspring, and so there are fewer dark offspring. Um, if those dark offspring that do get created get eaten, there's even few dark offspring, and so there's fewer dark alleles in the population. You might recall this pedigree or this birth um, chart. These are the parents, and then these are the offspring. These are the parents of these offspring. Uh, these are the parents of these offspring. That's how a pedigree chart works. We were supposed to circle two mice, and then we were supposed to cross out all the offspring of that mouse. So um, I circled a medium mouse, and all these uh, darker mice here, and some of the light mice, got canceled out of that population, weren't born because this medium mouse was killed by a hawk or some other factor. And then I crossed out this dark mouse, and then all these other mice, light and dark, weren't born into the population. The remaining population is quite a bit lighter than if you look at all of this population as a whole, or all of the population at that time point. So when you eliminate one mouse that has dark alleles, you remove those alleles from the population and it can change, and it will change, the frequency of the alleles of the whole population over time. So now that we've looked at small scale allele changes in a pedigree or that, uh, that model of which mice give um, birth to which offspring, we will continue and we're going to make a model. We need to develop that ex a model that explains why um, receptor dark and receptor light allele frequencies change within and across populations of deer mice over time. In other words, you need to show me um, that the beach environment selects for a particular kind of mice that have a particular allele and that the field environment selects for a particular kind of mouse with a particular allele. And those allele frequencies change over time as hawks act in that particular environment. So we wanna use evidence to support our explanation and incorporate scientific terms we use during the unit. You may wanna to refer to Table 5.1, Table 3. Be, able, be sure to include inheritance and mutation in your model. Once you've finished your model, take a picture and upload it. You can um, draw your model on paper. You can use uh, a sketch or drawing program that you might want to use that you've used in art class and upload that file. Um, or you can use a Jamboard. This is a model I started in class. It's certainly not complete. It's a little bit messy. I should probably clean up some of these arrows and put in some labels and um, include a, a longer explanation. Um, this is not a perfect model. You shouldn't use this as yours. If you're going to use it, you should add some more explanations, some um, more arrows, some more connections, and some more um, causation. Explain why the dark mouse is dark because of eumelanin and these receptor proteins. So, any model should include both the beach environment, and then I started another model um, that's definitely not complete. I put the icons in a Jamboard for you, and this is a good starter. I know copying the icons is a bit hard on an iPad, so I put some icons in here, and you can start with those. You can use the Jamboard to draw arrows and explanations and connections between these big ideas. Um, I also put proteins and DNA and RNA in there so you can explain how those factor into the, the system. And of course, you need to talk about alleles 
how those alleles code for receptors, how those receptors signal for melanin, and how that ends up in different colored mice, and how those different colored mice are acted on by Hawks, and how that allele frequency changes at, over time. So again, this is a uh, starter model. I'll give you the Jamboard and, in the explanation, and you can get started from here on your model. So now is a great time to pause the video, work on your model, and get it uploaded. Now that you've finished your model, let's tie it all together. To learn about mouse fur color, you've investigated different levels, populations, individual mice, their cells, the proteins created in those cells, and the DNA that codes for the proteins. Before we conclude, let's reflect on what we've learned and try to answer this final question. How do all these levels work together to influence fur color in a mouse population? Complete the chart in your field notebook. So here's our wrap up in the field notebook. To learn about mouse fur color, you've investigated different levels, populations, individual cells, proteins. We're trying to figure out how all these levels work together. Here's a reminder of what each unit was about. Natural history, cell biology, protein synthesis. We put all the steps of protein synthesis in order and we talked about DNA and RNA and ribosomes. Unit four, we talked about genes and alleles, um, how alleles lead to particular phenotypes or uh, physical characteristics how breeding works, how inheritance, you get your alleles from your parents. And then unit five, we talked about how allele frequencies change. Um, remember, it, it's important to remember in unit one that we remember they were looking at soil color and the color of mice and measuring both with the scale. And they found that those, um, the color of the soil, the dirt, and the color of the mice they matched pretty well. So that was part of the natural history and ecology. On the next page, you'll see a table. Your task is to complete the table to show the connection between the units. For the squares on the diag diagonal, for example, unit one times unit one, give a brief description of what the unit is about and the factors you investigated. So I did part of, um, I did unit two times unit two for you. We learned that the receptor in the cell membrane signaled the cell to make dark melanin. That's what we learned in unit two. So that's unit two times unit two. Now, we also, I also figured this, filled out this, this is how unit two relates to unit one. And that's gonna be your next mission here. Next, think about the levels and units connect. Describe the relationship between the two levels and the corresponding squares. For example, unit two and unit one, how predators and proteins work together to influence fur, fur color. For some squares, you might need to reference other squares in order to develop the connection. For simplicity, when you complete the table, assume you are studying mice in a field environment. That way you don't have to describe it in the field and the beach because the squares are pretty small. So in unit one, um, we learned that um, uh, a couple of scientists went out to study the relationship between the soil color and the color of the mouse fur. And we learned that there was a relationship is a statistical relationship between soil color and mouse color. Remember we made those graphs and the graphs that had straight lines are the ones that uh, had, a, had a meaningful relationship between the two variables. So um, the soil color and mouse color was a meaningful relationship between those two variables. We also saw that hawks eat light mice more frequently in the field.
And that is that was kind of a prelude or a hint about what was coming next um, in terms of allele frequencies and genetics. Okay. So I did two for you. I did two um, how related to, to one. Remember, unit two was about cell biology. We looked at the cell membrane. We looked at that receptor sitting in the cell membrane. Remember the big purple glob sitting in the cell membrane? And then if that receptor um, signaled for dark melanin, we got a dark mouse. Um, the light receptor didn't uh, attached to the signal proteins, so we knew there was something different about that light receptor protein. Um, this is not the answer to Unit 3. You need to go back and figure that out, and how Unit 3 relates to Unit 2 and Unit 1. And then you can do Unit 4 and Unit 5. So pause the video and spend some time filling out this chart. This chart is really important. It's worth most of the points for this particular unit in my class. Um, so spend some time, really make some connections. This is kind of the point of the whole unit we've been doing over the past five weeks, is trying to make connections about what we can see, what we see in the environment. We see mice running around and their proteins, their cells, um, and other factors in the environment that affect those cells, proteins, alleles, and how all of those different levels, populations to proteins, are connected. So once you've finished your table, make sure you hand that table in as well. In these deer mice lessons, you've learned that how the tra trait of mouse fur color changed over time. The skills and knowledge you used in these lessons can be used to understand other traits. Think about what you know about the world. What is another trait in any living thing that might have changed over time? What might have caused this trait to change? What would you need to investigate to test your hypothesis? Um, so this could be a lot of things like uh, plants evolving to be more insect resistant. They might have gotten bigger thorns or um, uh, an odor that drove away the insects or thicker bark or um, maybe they grew taller um, if that was a if it's a predator on four legs being taller might help um, keep your leaves from being eaten if it's an insect probably doesn't matter um, so think about different uh, different organisms in the environment around you it could be squirrels. We probably all see those out our windows. It could be dogs. It could be uh, wolves, coyotes. Um, coyotes have done an amazing job adapting to the urban environment. So have raccoons. And so people can have an impact on um, animals as well. So there's lots of things to think about. You can think about, um, you could even think about bacteria. Bacteria have changed over time, have been naturally selected um, by antibiotics. Antibiotics kill off the bacteria um, that um, are susceptible to antibiotics, and the antibiotics are left are ones that don't die from antibiotics, and so they reproduce and live on. Um, and so there are some ideas to write about in question four. So treat this kind of like... Uh, you would any other assessment and do a good job showing what you know. And we're going to start the next activity. That's the summary. So please write an individual response to this prompt. Given what you know now, explain how predators, the environment, mouse cells, and proteins, mouse DNA, and inheritance all work together to influence mouse fur color in different mouse populations over time. So treat this as your word bank. You should include the words predators, environment, mouse cells, and proteins, um, mouse DNA, and inheritance. You may also want to talk about receptor proteins, 
how they interact with signal proteins, those blue globs. Receptor proteins were the purple globs. Uh, signal proteins were the blue globs. We can go over here quickly to the icons page. Um, we are using to make our models, and we can see the receptor proteins here attached to um, receptor protein 1. That's functional. It'll break these open. And receptor protein 2 won't attach to these um, protein complex, and it won't break it in half, sending the signal protein off to um, tell the cell to make you melanin or the darker pigment. So you can talk about the alleles for the proteins on the mouse DNA. So there's a dark allele and a light allele. Um, you can talk about hawks because that's part of the environment. How do hawks affect the allele frequency? If you get eaten, you can't have kids. Mice that are eaten cannot reproduce. And so that, over time, affects the allele frequency. So those are some ideas that should get you started. This is not your answer. This are, those are some sentence starters, some ideas. Um, treat this as your word bank. Make sure you get all of those words. And this should be a pretty substantial paragraph or maybe even two shorter paragraphs. Thanks so much. I appreciate all of your hard work that we've done in this long unit with lots of great learning. I'll see you later.